Hello and welcome to week 10 in cultural anthropology. And this particular chapter, chapter 13, and we're going to be going into chapter 14 as well, is interesting. Let me tell you a little bit about my experience with this. Getting into this field of anthropology, exploring the, you know, National Anthropological Society and the divisions and you know, all that stuff. And it is remarkable the contrast between the field of anthropology and its evolution as a professional field with what I know about the evolution of the professional field within psychology. Now psychology, as you could probably guess, gets a lot more credit, gets a lot more money, a lot more funding, let alone science, you know, let alone when you get into like, well, psych is a science, sorry, physics and, you know, it's going to be pretty hard for a psychologist to justify, you know, a particle accelerator for $12 billion. Think about the kind of funding that goes into hard science, NASA, space exploration, chemistry, biology, and all that stuff. That's the higher echelon. Then you have psychology and you have anthropology as we've been learning and a completely intense, well thought out science of studying cultures in context. And the way it organizes information, to me, it's, it still has some growing to do to kind of match. This sounds, it sounds a little ethnocentric, it probably is. You know, coming as a psychologist going, you guys got to get it together a little bit, a little bit more divisions, a little bit more understanding about diversity, different field, I'm in a different place. So maybe I think that's useful, maybe the anthropologists don't think it's useful. Either way, here we are at chapter 13, and we're looking at the history of ideas. It struck me that this was in chapter 13, where in almost every intro to psych book, the history of psychological ideas is in chapter 1. So here we have it in chapter 13 in this particular edition. And so we've talked about some of the basic concepts. Then we're going to go, here's the history of the ideas. It's kind of an abrupt turn. Maybe it's a commercial in the middle of all this. Uh, but fun nonetheless, we're going to take a venture down the history of ideas in anthropology, some of which you've already got. You know, there was the armchair, get off the porch, transition into field field work and actually embedding yourself that you're doing in chapter five and chapter ch chapter six farmers markets religion you're doing two studies where you're going into uh the situation practicing that field research that's so indicative of uh anthropology so the complete sense of looking at a situation is described in the textbook as up, down, and all around. Up, down, sideways perspective of studying culture. So we're going to have a discussion about that. I'm going to tell you, as, I, as I've been saying all along, this is a learning situation for me. I come from a deep psychological background and getting into the different words, the different terminology and whatnot of anthropology. I hope that this class has done a similar thing to you. It's given you some new language. It's, it's, it's kind of broken me out of, out of the box. I don't think psychology is really a box, but it's broken me out of that and say there's other perspectives. So I've been really enjoying my own growth process. I hope that you see that diversity from what you usually hear when you're talking about society. The quiz I'm actually having a quiz for chapter 13 is to look at a document that I use in my intro to social class and it's controversial topics. In sociology, the task is to find the inequity and the unfairness. In psychology, it's how does this affect people? How does it affect their mental health, their sense of wellness? In anthropology, we're trying to get a big picture of all the players and the different cultures that are interacting. So you imagine a, something like a pipeline that's being built. Now someone may have an initial reaction as to whether, you know, the Keystone pipeline should or should not be built or whatever in different political entities. What an anthropologist does, it goes in to see all the players, 
Who are the players that are involved in here? Of course, the public that may think that this is going to lead to lower gas prices. You have the people who own the land, say maybe some Native Americans, the, the, the uh, pressures of those lands, plus other Americans who are, whose land is being usurped, let's say, to build that pipeline when it was still going. Then you have the people that work on the pipeline that want jobs. They want to be able to put their kids through college. They have those kind of things. Then you have the executives of the companies that are dealing with stockholders who want to make money. There's scientists that have dedicated themselves to studying how to transport uh, oil across those kind of distance. There's the Canadian in Alberta where that oil was coming from. You know, it's looking at all these cultures interacting and valuing them, valuing them. Maybe a better example is, you know, we have, we have tourists and hunters in Maine. And sometimes when you're looking at a particular development or a situation, you're looking at them being opposed to one another. We best understand that op opposition by understanding each player's perspective. So you're going to be looking at these social problems or these and try to discover, try to, to uh, line up who are all the players in here and what is their individual take on this good or bad there might be people pro or against you know or for it or something like that but you're trying to take that up down and sideways look to try and understand all the players this is a very very valuable perspective to have when dealing with some of the controversial issues imagine trying to understand the mindset of Putin, of Vladimir Putin, the mindset of the people on the ground in Ukraine, the people of Ukraine, the people in Poland, the people in Hungary, the areas around there, what's going on, the history of all these different peoples, the Crimea Peninsula that was annexed years ago, and now we're looking at another area of ethnic Russians. What do they think of it? It may not matter in terms of your decision about what should happen there, but it will give you a more complex view as to all the different players and where are they coming from. Doesn't mean you have to validate anything. Doesn't mean you have to take a side. That's not what the anthropological view is doing. That's for later and personal decisions. Okay, so that's chapter 13. Chapter 14, Culture and Sustainability, I'm introducing you to a little bit separate from uh, the textbook, I believe, in, in, introducing you to a movie called The Anthropocene. Now, The Anthropocene is a film that was created that actually uh, is both a uh, presentation of the effect of human beings on the physical planet, and it's also an advocacy for creating the notion that the period in geological history of the earth has been separated into epochs and there's an advocacy that's going on to view the current epoch as the effect humans have had on the planet. Maybe in a big picture, humans are not here all the, you know, it's, it's kind of a very, very big picture that the anthro, like anthropology, is the study of humans. Anthropocene is the impact of humans upon the earth. There's a film that you can watch through our canopy services here at KVCC. And I want you to watch that whole film. It's a very graphic, very big picture music. It's meant to be an emotional journey over the effect of human beings on the physical face of the earth in line with the warming of the planet, industry, pollution, destruction, those kinds of things, raising awareness of the import that we might be on the precipice of, of making some different decisions as to sustaining our spaceship here that is flying us through the universe. So uh, it's a political, it is a scientific, it is an artistic, journey into that and I'm asking you in the discussion to discuss the impact of that film on you and again bring in all the players 
uh, economies still need to happen. Can we find a middle ground is, is possibly ultimately what we want to get from this from that particular chapter. So those some exciting things in this week where you know we're looking at the with the origin of ideas within anthropology, application of that up, down and sideways perspective on social issues and the big one on the Anthropocene and uh, and that kind of um, that kind of perspective, watching that film. So this, this would be a film I would show in class and we would have some discussion about it. Um, so watch that film. So that's the expectations for this week. Looking forward to continued great, great output from you folks. And um, remember the due dates for um, the farmer's market assignment and the uh, religion assignment are gonna be coming up. And you should be taking some time looking uh, at the rest of the semester and planning that out. Planning out, we are in week 10 of a 15 week semester. So we're two thirds of the way through to the end of this class and you've all been doing so well. Keep the pace, keep things going and, uh, and you know, end, end well. Uh, and so um, look forward to seeing this content coming out of you in the discussions and your assignments. And please do have a great week. It's getting nice out. It's nice and warm. We'll probably do another snowstorm, but spring is coming. Go enjoy it. Have a great week.